Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today I have with me right here the elusive iPhone 12. Wow, it's so amazingly the same as the old one, except it's uh, now straight around the side. Anyway, in this video, it's gonna be a fun one. I wanna see what the developer experience is gonna be like and seeing if we can find any details in the code to see if anything's changed. In case you don't know, I make this application which allows you to record three cameras at the same time in the iPhone 11, or like a get was 1080p. I wanna see if I can get more out of this iPhone 12. And I just wanna share with you this experience. Developer, is it any good? So the first thing I'm gonna do is plug it in. Now, good news is it still has a lightning connector, so I don't need to play around with my ports. Of course, if it was USB-C, I'm okay with that because I still have one of those. So you get a, an opportunity to trust this computer. As soon as you hit trust, you have to type in your passcode. This is normal for any iPhone, so same sort of experience. And also another normal experience is when you're actually coding and the phone locks, you need to always lift it up and show your face to unlock it. It's pretty annoying, so you pretty much have to set the display to not sleep if you wanna be a bit happy and contained when you're programming for iOS. What would be good is maybe if iOS had a developer mode where we tap that, it's a bit more intelligent about turning off the display. But nonetheless, my phone's plugged in. Let's see how long it takes for it to detect on my screen. And, ooh, I see an iOS device. And is, it, is that the one? It's got the same name as my old iPhone, so that's what confused me, but pretty much it's on the screen right now. So I'm gonna hit play. Now it's saying, do you wanna register your device to your developer account? You get around 100 devices every year to register. I'm gonna register it and see where it takes me. Boom, very quickly, it's registered the device and it succeeded, it's deploying. Fingers crossed we'll have the application on our phone. And yes, I got my application running on the phone. It says, oh, listen, you screen privacy for your photos. Your photos and memories are personal. Apple's new privacy controls let you decide what photos you wanna share. So this is the new system on iOS, which lets you choose which albums you wanna share with the application or all of them. So I'm just gonna set, allow access to all photos, just see if my application is running. And the way I've programmed it is so it can scale depending on the screen size. So it looks like this application is working as expected, I could take a picture. Everything is still running the same, and that's good news. So one application down, everything looks good. What I wanna check now is my video camera application, Multicam Pro, so I'm gonna launch that. In case you haven't seen, I did a review earlier last night where I did an unboxing live and I did some tests, and it looks like the iPhone 12's camera is worse than the iPhone 11's camera. Unfortunately, or fortunately, they've added denoising post-processing algorithm, actually live post-processing algorithm when you're video recording. So while if you don't like grain, it's good. In low light situations, to me, it looks a lot worse and more blurry and bubbly. And now I've turned off a bit of light. And oh, this ultra wide is complete -wide. black. You can see a bit of the image on the 11, but there's nothing on the 12. Hopefully you'll be able to disable it in the future, but if you wanna check that out, make sure you check out the link in the description for the full in-depth test that I've got going on. So let's see where my Multicam Pro application is up and running. I'm just gonna fire it up. Got them both on the screen. And I'm just gonna run it first, and then I'm gonna dissect and see what resolution it's giving me. Previously, like I said, the iPhone 11 would only give me 1080p at the highest. I'm wondering if you can now get 4K on both cameras at the same time. That would be pretty fun. It might be just a little unlock. So it's now building the project. And it's also charging the phone at the same time. So number of cameras, I'm just gonna step through. I'm getting four cameras. And I'll hit play. So there you go, I've got split screen action on my screen. It's running really well. I'll try using triple cam. And I've got three cameras on the screen right there. It's running really fluid. Now what I wanna see is the resolution that it's actually detecting. By default, I am getting 1080p on all three cameras. So it looks like it's the same as the iPhone 12. That's a bit unfortunate. All right, so I've got this variable called supported multi-camera device sets. And I'm just gonna print that out to see exactly what's going on. And I can see here in the log, I've got the front and the back and the ultra wide and the telephoto all registered there. And I can use them all in tandem 
that's pretty good. So now I wanna see the resolution that it bakes it into it. There you go, active width 1080p is the maximum you can get from multicam at the moment with the iPhone 12. They didn't improve it at all with there. So yeah, that's it. The developer experience of the iPhone 12 seems like it's pretty much the same as all the other iPhones, which is good and bad. Good because I get to reuse all of my cables. I get to reuse all of my coding. I don't need to do anything special for this phone. I've already made my applications scale to different phone sizes and iPads and all that kind of stuff. So I'm pretty much protected. There is a slight difference in height on this phone, but overall it's pretty much the same as before. And that's all I got to say about that. Hope you found this amazing video useful. Not sure we learned much from it, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Yeah, it's a shame it didn't improve. I was expecting, you know. I had honestly really hoped that they did improve the multicam. I was hoping for like 1440p, just a little bit of a bump. 